Welcome everyone to Pop Trigger. Francis here, joined by Ryan Hansen and Jamie Chung. We are here to promote uh, Hulu exclusive Resident Advisors. But before we get into that, I was so impressed with Jamie Chung's pronunciation of Edinburgh, and you just came in and your pronunciation of Edinburgh was great as well. Thank I'm you. gonna play a little game called Scottish, not Scottish. Okay. okay. Yes. So this great. is gonna be. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you. It's just 20 seconds. Five things, and you just have to answer straight away. Scottish or not okay. Scottish. Okay. Okay. You okay. ready? Yeah, we got. This. You nervous? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you're gonna compete against each other. You're not a team. Oh, yet. we're against. Oh, so this is <laughs> I'm going down, Sorry. Chung. Okay. okay. All right. So first thing, bagpipes. Scottish. All right. Easy. I'm just trying to weigh you guys in. The questions aren't all going to be this easy. Okay. All right. The Queen. Scottish. Nope. Not Scottish. Good. Yes. Well, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. That one shouldn't count. Foul language. Scottish. You saying I've got foul language? <laughs> yeah. All right. Red beards. Scottish. Scottish. The answer was actually a third answer. It's called Skyrish. It's like Scottish and Irish. Irish yeah. Oh, yeah, so you guys okay. just kind of build on that one. Okay. I'm lucky. All right, last one. This is this could be a decision. Well, point. I have to go opposite. Yeah, if you get it, said. if you get it, then we're going to go to a, like the tiebreaker point, which I've got one hidden in my back okay. pocket. Okay. All right, scones. Go ahead, Jamie. Not Scottish. I'll say Scottish. I'm afraid she wins. That's English, oh. actually, scones. So you win the I knew award. That, but I Congratulations. Had to... Let's get to Resident Advisors. I watched it last night with you guys. It was awesome. Really fun. What I want to know straight away is it just looked like you guys had so much fun on set. What was the chemistry like behind the camera? You know, it was really hard to make it work mm. with this guy. <laughs> um, Working with Jamie is not easy. I feel the um, same way, Ryan. So there was no chemistry Zero. Uh, off camera, but thankfully on camera there's a, there's a little bit. Yeah, it works. <laughs> well, that's what people say. Is that the best on-screen chemistry is when people don't actually like each other too much off-screen. So is that yeah. what happens with you guys? We can't stand right, each can't other. Stand yeah. Them, yeah. Yeah. So was it fun, like, just going back at each other's throats on, on camera? I feel like it was so easy. I really didn't have to do anything. Everyone's so funny around me, you know? So well, you know, it's I mean, more reactionary. I mean, Jamie is the most adorable person in real life, and then her character is also adorable. And a little, like, neurotic, so she played heightened that. And then I'm kind of just goofy and so I just played so like we just kind of naturally just, it just set our we set our lines it was so fun but it was so quick it was 18 days mm -hmm. Ryan was in between in between jobs so we were so lucky to have him and he was only there for four nine nine okay no, I, was <laughs> I like, think four? I was there for nine <laughs> nine but out of 18 days I mean that's a lot to do for for seven episodes yeah, yeah we shot very fast so yeah. we all had to like bond very quickly, and we did. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're on, we were on, there weren't a lot of breaks, so we're on set all the time, and there was certainly a lot of camaraderie. It seems like a lot of shows are going for original content online. Did that influence your decision when you, when you read the script? I mean, it was all about the material and the people behind it. It's rare that you get to read all seven episodes that are in front of you, ready to go. Um, so you get to see the true evolution. Um, and it was, such, it was such funny material, I had to do it. For me, I um, the character, it, my character's name is Doug Wiener, and so I didn't read anything but that. I'm like, <laughs> I'll do it. Sold. Wiener. <laughs> but there's a lot of things. I mean, in the opening scene, we see your uh, genitalia fall on a poor guy's head. Sure. Um, on his I think eyes. it was Daryl, yeah, on his eyes. Was that, the, when, <laughs> did you read that from the start? What did you think when you seen that was one of the first scenes? I said, that, uh, bucket list, you no. know, <laughs> wanting to shoot something like that. And I said, check. And, I, and so I had to do that. It seems like there's a lot of uh, leeway online, right? When you have yeah. a lot of these shows that you're allowed to do that. It seems like you have the freedom to do whatever you please as long as it's within the certain boundaries. And this show, for me, it comes across as such a winner because it has that freedom. And it's, it's, it re correctly represents what I've experienced at college. I know not everyone has the same college experiences. I know you told me last night you didn't go to college, so this was you reliving your college experiences. And you said you had a lot of fun getting into that character. What did that revolve around? How did you get into that frame of mind? Well, because I have a lot of friends that went to college mm -hmm. and I got to hear about their stories. Now I'm making my own memories going to college. So these are my college memories. So there was a lot of pre-drinking uh, in the awesome. day, a lot of getting high, mm -hmm. and just sort of to, 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 re to realize what it's like to be in college at all times is to just immerse yourself in uh, drugs and alcohol. So let me get this straight. For your role, you got drunk and high to get into the character. No. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm joking. No, that's right. Wait, that's you right. guys were partying without me? You were there. All right, so I want to talk about who's behind the project. All right, so bear with me while I crucify his name. I wrote it down. So I, I know he was involved in Friends, right? Ira, is it Ungerlida? Ungerlider. Ungerlider. So you're yeah. part German, so you know how to say that. Unger say it in your best German accent. Ungerlider. That's pretty good. What about you? I just say it loud. 
No, I can't do it. <laughs> so he was involved in uh, amazing projects such as Friends. What did he bring to this uh, picture? Because it seems like he was just, he, uh, going by the speech at the start, it just seems like everyone was so tight knit. Was that, did that stem from him? He knew exactly what he wanted. You know, he had a pretty clear vision story-wise of where he wanted to go. And with his experience and, you know, being on, on huge comedies, like How I Met Your Mother, Friends, he knows what's funny. He knows what jo he knows what's, what works, but he also knows to kind of let the actors have the floor and, like, find find the bits and pieces that come out naturally. So yeah. he's he was a great director. He, he knows how to work with actors. Actors, yeah. yeah. You know, which is what you want. You know, so it's great. He's the best. So that love you, Ira. Love you. <laughs> so I'm. I can just tell already. Both you guys are fun characters, jokesters. But who was the jokester on set? I mean, I'm going to put my head out there and say it might have been you. Not to say that you wouldn't be a jokester. I can tell she you who, so, as yeah. well. I'm but who was the person that all like were behind the cameras that was causing all the mayhem? Um, I'm going to say you, but also. I feel like Graham. Graham. Graham was for sure. He was such yeah. a trickster. Like, I mean, some of it was a bit too vulgar for my taste, but. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, he's like, hey guys, I miss you. It's like a group text, and he's like, hey, I miss you guys. We're like, oh, that's so sweet. And then he sends like a picture of his poo. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of poo and fart jokes with so Graham. Just random. in the middle of a scene, just, brr, you know, just always ripping ass. Sorry, yeah. Graham, but you, you mm, have a gas stinky. problem. I thought yeah. I had a gas problem. No, it's pretty bad. So, in, in Graham as well, his character borderline sexually inappropriate. Towards you from the start, what was it like working with him in terms of building that chemistry? I mean, I think it just comes naturally. Graham is just like that on and off set. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he's such a jokester and he's so easy to love. But, you know, he I think he is like a natural flirt. Flirts with me too. I, mean, I love Graham. Are you kidding me? He's oh, gosh, I love Graham. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, just to, for us fans out there, I can't wait for it to come out. It premieres April 9th, right? Yes, it does. Uh, on Hulu specifically. So, you guys need to check that out, especially Pop Trigger audience who are already on Hulu. Uh, make sure to go and check it out. But, What's next for it? I, I know I can't tell too much from just two episodes. Is there going to be a, a second season? Is it going to continue on? You know, I really hope so. We had this conversation last night. It's such, it's so fun and it doesn't, you know, take much time to make. I'd love to get, get the crew back together. All right, what about a cameo appearance from some Scottish guy that's looking for work? Mm. I think he fit right in. Oh, yeah. Well, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, make sure to subscribe to Pop Trigger and check out all the episodes coming April 9th. Thanks again from Jamie Chong. Woo! Thanks, guys.